little Q&A while we go on a nice walk to the beach. I have all your questions that you asked me on Instagram, so I'm going to be going through and giving you guys a little insight to my life that you might not see on TikTok or Instagram. So let's get right into it. Starting easy from the beginning, number one is what is your favorite hobbies? I have picked up so many random hobbies, especially during quarantine, but I've always been somebody who can't just be stuck in enjoying one thing. I'm always changing it from doing calligraphy to making bucket hats to unicycling and making TikToks. There's literally never been a single time that I can just be stuck on one thing. And I kind of love that. I'm always trying new things and always being a jack of all trades and master of none. So what is the weird but favorite food combination that you enjoy most? And I actually really like this question because I've had this food that I eat since I was a kid that my mom always used to make me. And it is spaghetti, noodles, and sugar, and butter. And I know you might be like, that's such a weird thing to eat, but it's delicious. So if you haven't tried it yet, I'm putting you on it. It's so good. Where did you learn your elite shaving technique? This is a TikTok question for sure. I was a swimmer in high school and that is the way that we shaved our legs before a big competition day. It always gives me such a smooth shave that I feel like lasts forever. So I talk about it quite often on TikTok and I love doing videos talking about it because people are always so confused, but to be honest, it's fantastic. Next question, who is your best friend? Apart from my mom or my boyfriend or my sister or my dog, the one person in my life that I consider my best friend is my roommate from college and her name is Katie. We actually met when we were freshmen and we were random suite mates, so we shared a bathroom in the dorms. And honestly, we're inseparable. I've lived with her all four years of college. She just understands me. And we're actually like long distance besties now because she still lives in Michigan and I live out here in California. And somehow our relationship has never wavered and never, never broken. So I consider her like a lifelong friend and I'm excited to just hopefully see her again very soon after quarantine. How are you able to be yourself all the time? This is a really good question, and I think that on social media, it's easy to think that every day is a good day and every day is really easy and simple to live because you only see one small part of my life. But in reality, it's so important to just do whatever makes you the most happy, and I've just grown to do that more often as I've gotten older. At the end of the day, it's your life and you should live it as you are, and if people can't accept you for who you are, then they don't deserve a seat at your table. They don't deserve a spot in your life. So just keep doing you and you'll attract people with similar vibes and similar enjoyment. I like to think that's exactly what happened on TikTok is that my community is just filled with people who understood me and wanted to have the same energy as me. And it's because I continually just put out myself. What are your favorite flowers? Peonies, 100%. Always have been like the little pink ones, like all the beautiful petals. They're gonna be at my wedding for sure. What do you do to calm yourself down? I actually love this question also because it's so generic. It's like when I'm mad or when I'm stressed, but honestly, cuddling up on the couch, taking a night away from the phone, taking a day just to be with people that you enjoy being around. If it's in a split second, deep breaths and a glass of water, but if it's you have time to actually take yourself out of your shoes, sometimes I get very lost in the mindset of being on my phone and doing social media and just continually developing that side of my life that I lose track of just being present and yeah, taking a minute to just realize this precious life that you're given and you need to live it is very important and that will normally calm me down too. Your favorite physical feature and personality trait about yourself. My favorite physical feature is, uh, I don't know, maybe my smile. I never had braces, pretty proud of that. Uh, I still have all my wisdom teeth, so I'm pretty smart, I guess, and uh, yeah, I would say that's my favorite physical feature. My favorite personality trait is that I still act like a kid in a lot of ways, more than one. I am older than people think that I am, and I like that. I like that I still seem like somebody who's not afraid to have a good time, and like I'm not growing up too fast, so I like that about myself. Who is your favorite YouTuber? Oh my gosh, I think I'm like most other people. I'm an Emma Chamberlain addict. I absolutely love her videos. I want to be her friend in real life. She's so authentic and down to earth that, yeah, I aspire to be somebody like that. And she, yeah, I really like her content. What is the first thing on your bucket list? 
I mean, traveling has always been on the bucket list, for sure. I, I think everybody's bucket list is traveling on there. Going to Australia is pretty high up there. I was hoping to go this year before Corona happened, but maybe get a new car. That would be a cool thing to check off the bucket list. It'd be to spice up my ride. How did you get such a consistently positive mindset? Once again, a little thing about social media is that you only see a small percentage of my life, so although it might seem like I'm happy all the time when I'm on my phone, there are definitely bad days still. There's definitely still days that I'm not my happiest self, but every morning you're waking up with an opportunity to just do whatever you want with your life. Take advantage of that, of the fact that you have so much opportunity every day when you wake up, and you should just wake up smiling. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, there's a friend that's coming over to say hello. Hi, 
and it's because they're one of the only universities in the top 10 in the country for film that accepts students who don't have an undergrad in film. A lot of places like NYU and I think USC requires that you have like 30 to 60 credits of undergrad in film. Luckily, LMU didn't require any film, but I did have to make my own portfolio, so I actually wrote a script and directed a short film with my friends and then submitted that in my application. How did you have credentials for your film degree since you got a mechanical engineering degree? Same question pretty much. I created a really strong portfolio. I created this short film, which you can actually click on this thing up here if you want to check it out. And it's called Only for a Night. And this was like my very first artistic narrative film. And I loved how it turned out. And I fell more in love with creating movies just from that one project. So I got my friends together, made a short film. My friend actually flew in from Philadelphia to act in it with me and both both of the talent were so talented, it was unreal. So I'm really happy that I had them to help me with that. What type of films do you most enjoy making? I am a love story type of gal. I already know it. I already am convinced that I'm gonna tell love stories for forever in the film industry. So people might think that all the love stories have been told. I like to think differently, but anything about love and mushiness and just happiness is what I wanna tell a story about. What would you like your film career to look like? Are you acting, directing, or writing? So I'm directing. I've started to focus more in writing because I want to develop my writing better. I mean, if the opportunity ever presents itself, I have no experience in acting, so I'm not going to be like, hire me, but hire me if the opportunity ever presents itself. So that's that. <laughs> this question's brutal. How long do you spend filming TikToks every single day? Probably three hours minimum, I would say, a day I spend filming. A lot of times I'm brainstorming, but just filming itself. That doesn't include the brainstorming time. So it's a time consuming craft, to be honest. And I don't think people realize how much work goes into every single video that I make. So yeah, it's a lot more work than you think it is. What has changed in your life since TikTok? Honestly, my appreciation for content creators, because when you see everything done and finished and nice and on the internet and on social media, you think like, Oh my god, that's not a real job. All they're spending doing every day is just making videos. They just film themselves and then they post it. And it is not like that at all. And I've learned that so much as I've been in quarantine, especially trying to like develop my own art and create my own videos and continue to grow in my content. It's been so, so difficult to just find the time to manage being a full-time student and just working on videos all the time. It's so much harder than people think that it is. So my respect for people who are content creators is so much higher now since I've started TikTok. How do you personally deal with hate on social media? I still struggle with this question because you would think that after some time it stops bothering you and to be honest it doesn't ever stop bothering you. Every, every jab, every comment, everything you see still hurts. But you get to a point that you remember that nobody really knows you like they think they know you and that they only see such little of your life that it's really not that they don't have any reason to speak on your life because they only see so small of it. So the more that I've been on social media, I'm for sure getting better at handling it. It bothers me for a shorter amount of time maybe, but hate on social media I think shouldn't exist. I don't think if there's any reason to put somebody down. I still genuinely believe if you don't agree with what somebody has to say, then just swipe past. That's like the most beautiful feature is that you can just continue on. Um, and I wish that more people who had something not nice to say would use that feature. Right? What is your favorite part about being a creator? Easy, the people, 100%. The humans that comment on my videos, the people that say hi to me when they see me at Target, the people who hype me up or send me the sweetest DMs or remind me that like, everything's gonna be okay or that I have this it's so crazy to think that I have this support system of humans who just get me and who want to see me happy and that's crazy so that's 100% my favorite part about being a creator alternate question what's the hardest part about being a creator and it's not taking everything that you read on the internet about yourself to heart Do you consider yourself famous? I don't know. Like people are really just getting a peek into my normal, average, everyday American life. But I still feel like a normal, like normal Anna, so I just still feel like me and I just feel like I get to share my daily, normal
normalness and achievements and happy moments with a bunch of my friends. So I don't really feel famous. Oh, this is the question of the hour. What is your friend circle like now that you have a platform? And to be honest, it's way bigger because I have all of you guys to be my friends, but there are definitely people in my life that I would have expected to stay around or who I relied on before that kind of showed a different light once I got a platform. And it's sad when like those people, you know, you realize that you might be losing a friend or that some people, you know, only want to be your friend for certain reasons, but I have all of you guys and my close, close friends that were my friends from day one never left my side through it. So I'm really lucky to have that type of support system where I still feel like we're all friends and we're just doing life together. We're tapping into a little bit of relationships now, a little bit less about me, a little bit more about the spice in my life. Do you ever overthink or get jealous of girls and how do you maintain that confidence? So although it seems like a cheesy response because anybody will tell you like, no, you're worth, you are enough. It really is that, but getting to that point just stems for me personally from having somebody who never made me feel like I had to question my importance in their life. And although I still do get jealous when like Brandon goes out or he's with other people or if we're together and I see some other girl walk up and talk to him, I always know that like, I like to think he wouldn't pick somebody over me. I think I'm pretty cool, so let's hope that that stays that way. <laughs> Did you actually know that you and Brandon would last when you started long distance? Um, that's a question we get pretty often, especially in like our couples Q and A's. And we've answered this before, but the truth is you really can't tell anything and there's no reason to put that much pressure on yourself. So don't think that you have to last. The point is to take it one day at a time, stay confident in each other and continually make decisions that make you happy. Because the point isn't just to end up with the person that you are with. The point is to end up with the person that you want to spend forever with. So. If it's not good, then don't hurt yourself in trying to make it good. Just, it's gonna feel good and it's gonna be good and it's gonna be perfect if it's the right person. Do you care about your friend's opinions about your significant other? All my friends that are my real friends would genuinely tell me if they didn't like somebody, every one of my friends is the most supportive of my relationship. And it's funny because like the people who weren't the most supportive are the same people who might not be as close in my friend circle anymore because I kind of realized that they didn't have my best intentions in mind. If you're best friends, they will tell you when it's not right, but they'll also know when you're your happiest and when it's right for you. Oh, my favorite question. How do you keep the spark alive during long distance and the ups and downs that come with it? The one thing that we look forward to most is seeing each other. And to be honest, although it's it's a little, it's very mellow when we're not together. Like we just text like normal every single day and check in and it's not always like the most exciting conversations. Getting to see each other like reignites the spark in our relationship. So don't worry yourself too much if your relationship starts to feel just a, boring isn't the right word for it. But if it starts to feel a little bit dry, it's because you're just not together and it's so much easier to be yourself when you're in the same room and be with your person when you're in the same room so just keep that in mind and just check yourself a little bit and make sure that you're still happy and if you think about seeing them and you still get all like giddy and excited then you're probably you're probably doing okay what are your thoughts on a proposal so I mean I hope it comes soon but there's absolutely no rush and the second question goes into this what's your marriage timeline which Brynn and I agreed on like 28. 28 is like the nice age because I still feel young. I'm not mentally ready for a wedding yet or to be prepared to be married yet. So I'm still enjoying my youngness and feeling young and I think getting married would make me feel a lot older than I am. So maybe not older than I am, but it would make me feel older. So I'm just not ready for that yet. Do you plan on living in California for the rest of your life? This has been a top conversation in my relationship recently. And I think the answer is no right now. I'm definitely loving LA right now. I'm loving California now. It's a fun, exciting city. It's great for young people, but I don't see myself there forever and ever, especially to raise kids. I think that I wanna be in a smaller city like where I grew up. So a few places have been thrown around. Like the one place that Brian and I talk the most about is maybe moving to Texas, but we'll see where we, we'll see where we end up. The final question.
question of the night. How are you really? And I'm good. Yeah, life is good. I have nothing to complain about. I'm a happy camper, I guess. Just doing what makes me happy every day and getting to be with you guys all the time and getting to make videos all the time and just spreading some joy in this world feels good and it feels comfortable even though I still am living on the edge a little bit and I feel like my life is very open to the world, I'm very happy with life right now. So I hope it doesn't change much, but I know that there's some good changes coming in the future that I hope just make me happier, honestly. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and then subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this one. I cannot wait to see you very soon. And I hope you have the happiest day.